By the time the first European ship sliced through the grey waves of Tierra del Fuego, the Selknam had already been there for at least 10,000 years. They stood on the cold step of the world's end, wrapped in guanaco hides, their skin painted in stripes of red, white and black clay. They hunted the wild herds that swept across the plains, built their shelters from bones and branches, and looked toward the Beagle Channel where the horizon burned with cold light. To outsiders they seem timeless, but as modern science now reveals, their presence in this place stretched back into the deepest layers of South American history. Older than the pyramids, older than the first Inca temples, older even than the forest that once cloaked the land they called home. The story of the Selknam is not simply one of loss, though it ends in tragedy. It is also one of extraordinary survival, genetic, cultural and human. New research in paleogenomics and archaeology has begun to map the deep ancestry of the people who once ruled the northern half of Tierra del Fuego. What scientists have found paints a portrait of an unbroken lineage that endured isolation, ice and invasion, maintaining its roots from the Middle Holocene nearly 6,000 years ago until the modern age. The discoveries have overturned old assumptions. For decades, archaeologists debated whether the Fuegians, the Selknam, Hausch, Yamana, and Kaweska were late arrivals pushed to the ends of the continent by waves of more advanced peoples. Genetic evidence now suggests the opposite, that they are the enduring heirs of some of the earliest South American populations, shaped not by displacement, but by adaptation. To understand the Selknam, one must first understand the world they inhabited. Northern Tierra del Fuego is an austere landscape, a sweep of wind-bitten tundra framed by grey hills and cold rivers flowing into the Beagle Channel. In the winter, the sun barely rises above the horizon. In the summer, the air fills with the drone of insects and the cry of guanacos. It is a land that rewards endurance, not haste. The earliest traces of human life here date back more than 12 millennia, when bands of hunter-gatherers crossed from the South American mainland, perhaps following herds across a frozen strait that no longer exists. As the ice receded and the sea returned, these settlers became isolated on what would one day be called Isla Grande de Tierra del Fuego, the land of fire. For millennia, they lived off guanacos and fish, leaving behind stone tools and the bones of their prey scattered in the dust. Archaeologists have long puzzled over how these early people related to later Fuegian tribes. The answer has come not from pottery shards or spearheads, but from fragments of DNA preserved in bone. In 2020, a landmark study published in Nature Communications by an international team, led by Harvard geneticist Nathan Nakatsuka, revealed a stunning level of continuity in southern Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego. Among the ancient samples, one stood out, a 5,800-year-old male from a site known as La Arcillosa II in northern Tierra del Fuego, the heartland of what would millennia later become Selknam territory. The man from La Arcillosa too lived and died long before writing, long before the bow and arrow reached the southern tip of the world. His bones lay beneath layers of sediment near the Rio Chico, his world confined to the windswept plains where guanacos grazed and snow fell sideways. When scientists extracted DNA from his remains, they found something remarkable. His genetic code was almost identical to that of later individuals from the same region, including those dating to the final centuries before European contact. In other words, this man was the ancestor of the Selknam, not metaphorically, but biologically. He carried the Y-chromosome haplogroup Q1A2A, the same paternal lineage seen in virtually all ancient and historic Fuegian males. His mitochondrial DNA, inherited from his mother, belonged to haplogroup D1G5, a branch found across the far south of South America and shared with ancient remains from the Chilean archipelago. These two markers, his paternal and maternal signatures, form a genetic fingerprint that still echoes in the genomes of living descendants across Patagonia. The man's diet, reconstructed from isotopic analysis, revealed a life bound to the land. His bones showed low nitrogen levels consistent with a terrestrial diet, rich in guanaco meat and plants rather than fish. He was not a seafarer, not yet. The sea, though close, would only later become central to Fuegian life. 
For the people of La Archilosa, the land was still the center of the world. This early population, archaeologists believe, spread across what was then a colder and drier landscape. They hunted guanacos, built temporary shelters from wood and hide, and adapted to a climate that could change from sleet to sun in an hour. Over thousands of years, their descendants refined tools, altered rituals, and adapted to shifting ecologies. But the genes, the bones, and the bloodlines remained the same. The Selknam were not newcomers. They were the last torchbearers of a lineage stretching back to the earliest Patagonians. When scientists compared the DNA of La Arcelosa, too with that of later individuals from sites such as Rio Pipo and Hoste Island, they found a striking pattern an unbroken genetic continuum linking the Middle Holocene to the Late Holocene and beyond. The Selknam did not appear as a new branch. They emerged as a continuation of an old one. This continuity contrasts sharply with the story of the Northern Andes, the Amazon, or even the Chilean coast, where waves of migration repeatedly reshaped the genetic landscape. In Tierra del Fuego, however, isolation preserved the old lines. The sea that cut them off from the mainland became both a barrier and a sanctuary. That does not mean their history was static. Around 2,000 years ago, the genetic record reveals a subtle but important shift, a new influx of DNA, most likely from the north. This second component, resembling ancient genomes from central Chile, contributed roughly 35 to 40 percent of the Selknam genetic makeup. The admixture likely reflected movement along the Andean foothills, or coastal corridors, bringing new people and new technologies to the south. Archaeological evidence matches this timeline almost perfectly. Around the same period, projectile point styles changed dramatically. Large, heavy spearheads gave way to pedunculated points, later shrinking into finer arrowheads. The arrival of the bow and arrow, dated to about 900 BP, transformed hunting and warfare across the Fuegian steppe. The same centuries saw a diversification of lithic industries and the abandonment of ancient obsidian sources in the West, hinting at both innovation and disconnection. These cultural shifts parallel the genetic data. The incoming northern groups did not replace the old Fuegian population. They merged with it. The result was a hybrid people the Selknam, who combined deep local ancestry with a spark of new blood from the north, which includes about 3% ancestry, from an ancient Southeast Asian population known as Population Y, or Australasian, most closely related to the Onge and Papuans today. The southern tip of South America was home to five distinct indigenous groups, the Arnikenk, or Tehuelche, on the mainland, the Selknam in northern Tierra del Fuego, the Hausch in the Maita Peninsula, and the Yamana and Kaweskar along the coasts and channels. To outsiders, these tribes appeared radically different, some land-based, others maritime. But the genetic map tells a subtler story, a Klein, a gradient of relatedness that mirrors geography. From the terrestrial hunters of the north to the canoe-using seafarers of the south, each group represents a point on a continuous spectrum of ancestry. In this spectrum, the Selknam occupy the middle ground, both geographically and genetically. Their DNA shows roughly two-thirds ancestry from terrestrial Patagonian foragers and one-third from southern maritime populations such as the Yamana. They were the bridge between the inland and the sea, between the guanaco hunt and the seal chase. The tests in the study quantified this connection. Geography and language were the strongest predictors of genetic similarity, while diet and technology mattered less. In simple terms, people mixed with those who lived near them, regardless of whether they hunted guanacos or paddled canoes. Over time, this produced a seamless web of ancestry across the archipelago, woven tighter by kinship and marriage than by conquest. The Selknam lived in a harsh but balanced world. The men hunted guanacos across the frozen steppe, using bows, arrows and bolus. Women gathered berries and shellfish and tended fires that never went out. Their society was semi-nomadic, moving with the seasons, following herds and weather patterns. They built conical shelters from bent poles and guanaco hides. What kept them there for so long, in one of the world's most inhospitable places? The answer lies partly in geography. 
the Magellan Strait and Beagle Channel isolated Tierra del Fuego, limiting contact with outside populations. But isolation alone cannot explain six millennia of survival. More important was adaptation, a cultural and genetic equilibrium finely tuned to the environment. Modern genetic analyses show that Selknam and related Fugian groups possessed low heterozygosity, a sign of small, stable populations with little external influx. In evolutionary terms, that can be dangerous, increasing the risk of genetic drift and inbreeding. Yet the Selknam turned isolation into strength. Their deep continuity may have given them a physiological resilience to cold and starvation, though those traits remain speculative. Archaeologists note their extraordinary caloric efficiency, their skill in using every part of the guanaco, and their mastery of seasonal cycles. In short, the Selknam were the product of long-term stability, a rare condition in human prehistory. While empires rose and fell in the tropics, the people of the Fuegian plains lived by the rhythm of wind and fire, generation after generation. What makes the Selknam so significant to science is not only their endurance, but what their DNA reveals about the broader story of the Americas. Their genome captures one of the oldest surviving branches of the first South Americans, a lineage that diverged early from the ancestral population that spread south from Beringia. Geneticists call this route the Southern Cone Founding Lineage. It likely split from northern South American groups more than 12,000 years ago, soon after humans crossed the Isthmus of Panama. The Q1-2A Y chromosome that defines this branch is found from the Pampas to Patagonia, but nowhere beyond. The Selknam version of it carries unique mutations not seen elsewhere, marking it as one of the oldest localized male lineages in the Western Hemisphere. Similarly, the D1G5 mitochondrial lineage found in both Le Arcelosa II and later Selknam individuals is an offshoot of D1, one of the original maternal haplogroups carried by the first Americans. Its restricted distribution, mostly in Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego, suggests that it emerged locally after isolation from the mainland. These uniparental markers act like fossils within the genome, immutable evidence that the people of Tierra del Fuego were not a late migration from the north, but a southern relic of the first wave. When scientists analyze ancient DNA, they often talk about ghost populations, ancestral groups that no longer exist physically but survive as traces in our genes. The Selknam, paradoxically, were once thought to be ghosts in history. Now they are ghosts in the genome, present, measurable and enduring. Their genetic signature forms a baseline for studying the population history of the Southern Hemisphere. Every Fuegian sample, every Patagonian genome, seems to echo their pattern. Even the Yamana, the seafaring canoe people of Host Island and the Beagle Channel, carry about one-third of their ancestry from Selknam-like inland groups. The maritime revolution that defined the Southern Archipelago did not erase the old land-based gene pool. It extended it to sea. This makes the Selknam a kind of Rosetta Stone for South American prehistory. Their DNA links the first pioneers of the continent to the last isolated hunters at its edge. Through them, scientists can trace how humans adapted from tropical forests to polar plains, from stone-tipped spears to bows, from isolation to global contact. Every genome tells a story, and the Selknam genome tells one of the longest and most unbroken human sagas on Earth. But long before the Selknam hunted guanacos on the plains of Tierra del Fuego, another woman lived and died along the storm-lashed shores of southern Patagonia. Her grave lay on a windswept peninsula called Punta Santa Ana, a place where the Pacific surges against basalt cliffs and the cries of sea lions echo through the mist. Archaeologists discovered her bones in a midden of shells and animal remains, evidence of a people who had mastered the sea thousands of years before sailors ever charted these waters. She is known to science as PSA-1, and her DNA has become the key to understanding how the maritime world of the Fuegians began. Radiocarbon dating places her at around 6,600 years before present, making her one of the oldest known inhabitants of the far south. When her genome was sequenced, it revealed something astonishing. She was genetically close to the terrestrial foragers of inland Patagonia, yet she and her people had already begun to transform their way of life. 
Her isotopic profile, exceptionally high in nitrogen, showed a diet dominated by marine resources, seals, fish, and shellfish. In her bones, scientists saw the pivot point where human history in the southern cone turned from land to sea. Genetically, she sits at the base of the Fuegian genetic tree. The Nature Communication study found that she shares deep ancestry with La Arcilosa too, the 5,800-year-old male from northern Tierra del Fuego, but her descendants diverged toward the maritime branch that would one day give rise to the Yamana and Cahuesca peoples. This means that the roots of the Selknam and their coastal neighbors were not separate trees, but twin stems sprouting from the same ancient trunk. When researchers plotted her genome on a multi-dimensional scaling graph of genetic distances, she appeared midway between the middle Holocene inland foragers and the later seafaring groups of the Beagle Channel. She is, in effect, the missing link between land and sea, a woman whose genome captures the moment when humans in Patagonia turned their faces to the ocean and never looked back. Her mitochondrial lineage falls within haplogroup D1G, the same maternal branch that runs through later Selknam individuals, suggesting that women like her carried their ancestry across millennia of storms and migrations. Her people's technology, harpoons, canoes and obsidian blades, marks the first archaeological expression of a maritime adaptation in the South. The genetic record matches the cultural one, PSA, one's population contributed significantly to later Fuegian genomes, including those of the Beagle Channel around 1500 years ago, and even to the host island man who lived more than 4,000 years after her. To visualize the deep structure, scientists modeled the ancestry of the region as a sequence of pulses. The first pulse, represented by Punta Santa Ana woman, established the maritime tradition that would dominate the western archipelago. The second, represented by La Arcilosa II and his terrestrial kin, continued inland. A third pulse, arriving from central Chile around 2,000 years ago, mixed into both, knitting the coasts and plains into one cultural genetic fabric. In this layered history, her genome stands as a southern sister to the Selknam's deep ancestry, a reminder that the people of the sea and the people of the steppe were never strangers. They were kin divided by adaptation, not by origin. Her descendants learned to ride the tides in bark canoes, while their cousins hunted guanacos beneath the aurora. But in their cells they carried the same legacy of the first humans to conquer the southern ice. Today, when researchers extract DNA from the bones of the Yamana and Kaweska, Punta Santa Ana woman's signal still whispers through their genomes. Her presence ties the Selknam of the plains to the mariners of the channels, uniting the entire Fuegian world in a single, continuous story that begins not with separation, but with shared beginnings at the edge of the sea.